at the Center for Autism Research. The doctor draws a series of complex diagrams. Behind me, the bird is swinging wildly in its cage. In the first of three graphs, tin is a color, mercury a sunset, aluminum a stick figure drawing of a girl holding a small boy's hand. The doctor speaks methodically, tracing a circular path with her finger. I repeat the names of the essential aminos, attempting to commit all 10 to memory. I purchase three bottles before leaving the office. I tell the receptionist that I know what it means to heal wounds and repair tissue, that I know where to find a cool, dry place to store them. Tomorrow, I will snap open the capsules, stir vigorously, force you to swallow. You will hate me with your eyes as you gasp for breath. I will swallow handfuls when my heart grows weak, when there's no more energy for diagrams or theories, when all the good bacteria have died like bees. Good evening, everybody. I'm Rosemary Dombrowski, the inaugural Poet Laureate of Phoenix, the founding director of a therapeutic poetry nonprofit, and the single mother to a son with nonverbal autism, congenital heart defects, a seizure disorder, and intellectual disabilities. And the reason why I believe in the medicinal power of poetry is not because of the studies, but because poetry has saved my life, and it has given voice and agency to my son's life. In the US today, one in five people are living with a mental health illness, and less than half are receiving mental health services. Additionally, there are 28 million Americans who do not have access to any form of health care. So there's a profound need to scaffold the system with accessible forms of complementary care and poetry has been lauded by clinical studies as an effective therapy for both body and mind. But I'm not just a proponent of poetic therapy. I'm also a medical humanist. So let me start by defining the medical humanities. Like the name suggests, the medical humanities reside at the crossroads of medicine and the humanities, healthcare and human care a kind of empathetic intervention. But out of all the humanities-based approaches, why is poetry such a powerful medicine? Well, like any form of writing, poetry is a means of articulating our experiences, reshaping them into a narrative that we can take control of. Accordingly, Writing poetry can loosen our subconscious resistance to painful or traumatic events, allowing us to process what we might otherwise avoid. Poetry is also a means of sharing our suffering, so it's an act of vulnerability, release, even self-healing. But because it's such a small container, Poetry requires us to narrow our focus, to focus solely on the most critical elements of our story, thus leading us into spaces of deepened reflection and insight. Dear son, please forgive me for revealing these stories for inscribing them like an anthropologist in the field of our kitchen or the exotic space of your bedroom. But there are people who need to understand that we are older now, more content, half toilet trained and able to rinse our own dishes, more capable of following the steps required to take showers, better able to navigate sidewalk versus street. Sometimes, 
we still cry at coffee shops, disappear into the dirt-filled crevice between window and table, a place where a lame bird might go to nurse its wing. We are surgical reconstructions of imperfection. Little has come to us naturally, but we have learned that the cycles of the heart begin in the right ventricle, sporadically emit tenderness and return through the left atrium, escape into the biological systems that will never know empathy, the ones that are unable to be nurtured back to life. Perhaps surprisingly, there have been dozens of clinical studies published over the past decade that have further legitimized the medicinal power of poetry. For instance, in 2016, a clinical trial published in the Journal of Palliative Medicine found that passive listening to music or poetry improved the pain and depression scores of cancer patients. But only poetry increased their hope scores. In 2019, a study published in Complementary Therapies in Clinical Practice found that patients suffering from trauma showed increased resilience and decreased stress and depression after six weeks of intensive poetic writing. For years, my son spent hours a day engaging in self-injurious behaviors. When he was 12, I reticently started him on the only antipsychotic approved for children at the time. And though the self-injury stopped almost immediately, the meltdowns and the sounds that accompanied them did not. And those sounds triggered awful things in my body and mind for years, from my own self-injurious behaviors to blackouts. I didn't realize for almost two decades that I was suffering from PTSD, something I'd always associated with veterans. My son is 23 now, and though I have many tools to help me navigate my PTSD, my one constant has been poetry. It has given me the power to process everything, from our daily struggles, to our medical and emotional catastrophes. I know that I can't change my son's condition, and I know that I may never be free of PTSD, but I can take control over the stories that I tell, the medicinal poems that I write. Every slamming door is a seizure. I am a mother praying under the Sagittarian sky. There's a harvest moon three times the size of the street light. We walk east on Culver and west on Bellevue. I sleep in the room across the hall because every slamming door is a seizure. Our devices glow into the night, unmonitored and uncharged. We live with the possibility that everything could be dead by morning. I am a mother worrying about direct sunlight and baseline pressures, the intensity of the baseline and the negative capability of sound, the negative ions and the changes in atmospheric pressure. I render a crude diagram of your universe connect the related symptoms with dotted lines, map the correlatives between them until your life is a pointillist painting, Seurat to Lichtenstein, Impressionism to Pop. I am a mother translating groans into meaning, pitches into feeling. I have been a musicologist in a past life, I think about the evolution of Appalachian folk, Beethoven going deaf, Ray Charles blind since the age of seven, how everything is an act of compensation, how we're all at a loss 
for something. None of us can predict what the future holds, but whatever it is, we are going to need tools to help us navigate it. So why not poetry? Poetry has gifted me life over and over again. And my hope is that you will leave here tonight believing in the medicinal power of poetry, maybe even gifting it to someone in need. Thank you.